How long have I been building bows? I've been building bows since probably about 95. And I thought it'd be pretty cool to go out and try to harvest an animal with a bow I built. I wanted to do something on my own, my own ideas, my own concepts. So that's why I first started out. I didn't go from just anything. Pretty yeah. much using all my own ideas and, and uh, concepts. So. I mean, you see full grown guys, 60 years old, getting their new bow, their new custom, and they're excited. They're like a kid at Christmas time. They're, had, I've even had guys come up and I cried when I got my bow and stuff. That's pretty cool, you know? It's just like anything and everything. You do it day in, do it day out. You know, it's it becomes a job. But then you get an old friend on the phone or a new customer, which in time becomes a friend. Then you're talking to them on the phone, and they're all excited about picking all their woods out. Man, it just reminds me how lucky I really am to have such a killer job. So, if you ever get to the point to where you can't stride. To to do something better the next time, then you've lost your passion. And once you lose that, then it's just a matter of time. You're you're just a regular old guy out in the crowd, you know what I mean? And I am a regular guy out in the crowd, but I'm just talking about so many guys that they really want to get into this and they see the they see the money that the guys are making as far as the traditional builders or custom builders and whatnot and saying, man, they're getting eight, nine hundred dollars for a bow. Thousand, twelve hundred bucks. They don't realize how much work it really is, and all the input you put into it. You know, you better be passionate about it because there's a lot more in it than what you would ever think. So, I spent probably two years just researching and trying to figure out what was good designs, what was bad designs, what I didn't like, and what I did like. And, and so, my very first bow I built, I, I just it was nothing like what I really wanted. So the second bow I built, I started building everything small and sleek. You know, the bigger bulk of your handles might be fine, but theoretically your hand's really not that big. Your hand, if you make a circle, your hand is really not a whole lot there, especially on most guys if, if they got working man hands, so to speak. You get that thicker palm, by the time you close it up, it really closes your hand quick. And my concept was, was if, if a guy grabs a hold of a grip and a pistol and it doesn't fit you, it's not gonna shoot well. I don't care how good of a shot, if it's not laying in your hand right, everything's lining up, it's not gonna shoot well. So what I had done was, was just kinda use that same concept. Yeah, I know it's not a pistol, but the same thing. If it fits your hand and fits you well, you don't have to throw your hand to the outside. You can actually palm the handle and make it shoot very well for you. It actually becomes an extension of your body. So with that in mind, I started doing custom fits on the handles. I started building everything small and sleek. And I'm not saying I changed the market, but I think down the road, I think a lot of guys, especially my early, earlier years, a lot of the guys were saying, man, you can't make them that small. They're gonna break. They never, you know, it's just, it's just something that I had tried and it worked out now. I'm not saying I changed the market. What I'm saying is, I think this market's so much smaller and sleeker now. The bigger, bulkier handles, people's getting away from them, which I think's a plus. Guys can build bows that will shoot in the 220s, 230s. It sounds crazy, but yeah, there's ways that you can make them fly that fast, you know, with light, lightweight carbon arrows and stuff. But you need the whole package. You need the quietness of the shot, you know. If, if there's a big bang in the woods, I don't care what you're shooting at, it's gonna react, you know. And if, uh, if you uh, don't have no consistency in a bow, you know, your, your repeatability as far as customer's concerned is gonna be junk. Your customers will never ever wanna buy another bow if, if the first bow they buy is not you know, a good sound quality product that shoots well and looks as well, so.